Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on the Nintendo Switch. This time I'm going to show you how to enter the Tail Cave and complete the Tail Cave. If you have already figured out how to get the Tail Key and you have entered the Tail Cave, check out the video description for the timestamp for when the Dungeon Guide begins, and I'll also be displaying it on screen here. In order to get the key for the Tail Cave, we first need our sword and shield. The sword is on the beach. And then from the beach, we're going to head north to the Mysterious Forest. We're going to make our way through there, find the Toadstool, bring the Toadstool to the Witch. She's going to turn it into magic powder for us. We're going to go back to the Mysterious Forest, sprinkle it on the raccoon, and then move one screen north to a chest that contains the tail key. So without further ado, let's get started. From Mabe Village, we're going to head one screen north of the well that you can jump in for a piece of heart. And then I'm just going to show you on the map exactly where we are. See, just northwest of the town and uh, just north of the library and the well. I accidentally hit the capture button because the minus button is really close to the capture button. I do that all the time. So entering the mysterious forest, the owl's going to come down and tell us, or he's rather going to ask us if we have uh, been to the tail cave. And in order to access it, we need the tail key, uh, which can be found in the forest here. So he's telling us about the windfish. And then uh, eventually he does uh, stop showing up and sometimes or sometime later he will show up and give you actual lore instead of like holding your hand and telling you what to do. Uh, at least he did it in the original. I'm not 100% sure if he does it on the Switch version, but from what I've played so far, uh, it's pretty one-to-one. -one. So we're going to make our way through the mysterious forest. We're going to kill some moblins and then I'm deliberately going to get trapped in the maze. Uh, just because I'm, I'm assuming that you will too. So if you attempt to go north from this uh, raccoon, he will transport you to an area that looks very similar, but it's actually only a couple screens away. So if you've taken any damage, you can visit that fairy. She will restore your hearts. Uh, but for now, we are going to make our way into a cave. And I will always stop to pick up rupees because you do need a lot to buy the bow and arrow later because uh, I'm not a thief and I don't want to steal it. So you want to make your way here. Uh, on the map right here and then this is a cave that you want to enter it's a little tree stump so we're going to enter that and now the floor in this cave collapses so whenever you see a crack on the floor that means that if you stand on it for too long it's going to fall down however these crystals can be slashed with your sword no problem there are two slimes here so just deal with them i am playing on hero mode so i, I i'm extra careful personally uh, if you're not playing on hero mode then all these enemies have a pretty high chance of dropping hearts, so you're always going to be at full health for the most part. So I always bring out my shield for these sword guys. It causes them to bounce their sword off my shield and become vulnerable. Uh, but right here, we're going to pick up the toadstool. And what we're going to do next is we're going to head back into the cave. And we are going to find the witch's hut. So unfortunately, it doesn't appear on the map yet, so we need to get closer. So heading back into the cave, uh, if you're wondering how to get this piece of heart, you do need the power bracelet, which you get from the second dungeon in the game, uh, Bottle Grotto. So be sure to come back here once you have the power bracelet. And uh, I will also be working on a guide for all heart pieces. As you can see there, I uh, fell in through the floor. But I will have a guide uh, once I complete the game for all heart pieces. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Be sure to subscribe uh, so you get alerted when that one comes up. So now that we are back on the other side of the mysterious forest, uh, like I said, I'm playing on hero mode, so I take things uh, pretty safe. And I'm actually going to visit the fairy here in a second to restore my HP. And then we are going to go to the witch's hut, which is uh, just a couple screens away. So, uh, yeah, you'll find these fairies. I think there's like three or four of them scattered throughout the world. At least there were in the original game. So she's going to restore our health. And then we're going to make our way to the witch. So yeah, like I said, in the original game, there were three or four of those scattered throughout the world. Uh, playing on hero mode, the, the beginning of this game is actually really, really hard. Uh, I've died like six times so far, um, but these are just clean attempts that I've made. But if you actually take a look at my file, it's like, I think after two dungeons, which is when I started like making this guide, I'm like seven deaths in, I think. Um, all right, so look out for the pickle dude over here. I don't know his real name, but they always remind me of pickles ever since I was a kid. Uh, and this is the witch's hut. It's it's pretty uh, pretty conspicuous uh, looking. So uh, luckily in the in, in the switch version of this game, you don't need to like equip the toadstool. You can just talk to her. Uh, so as I'm sure you've noticed by now, uh, Link's Awakening on Switch uh, does wonders for the amount of menuing that you had to do in the original. 
But now that we have the magic powder, if you want, you can light the other torch in the hut. Uh, I don't. I just leave. And now we're going to head back into the mysterious forest for one of the last times. And we now need to sprinkle the powder on the raccoon. So just follow the same path you took uh, all the way back to the to the forest. And then we're going to, uh, you know, kill everything on the way because I'm trying to get as many rupees as I can. Uh, if you're also playing on hero mode, these guys do throw spears. Uh, so just, you know, always have your shield up. Um, you do get a pretty, pretty nice window uh, for being able to attack them even after they have thrown their spear. Uh, so, yeah, just keep that in mind. Again, these sword guys, when they hit your shield with their sword, uh, they will bounce back and become very vulnerable. And then you can just hit them a couple times and just go from there. So a piece of power, this does double damage. It also causes enemies to get thrown halfway across the screen uh, when you hit them. So keep that in mind. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and equip the powder. We're going to sprinkle it on the raccoon. He's going to bounce around. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if you just stand right in front of him and, and do this, if he still like bounces all the way around the tree. I kind of remember that from the original as a kid. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if that happens. But if, if you just sprinkle it right here, he just sort of lands right in front of you. Uh, but now that he is no longer a raccoon, for some reason, the fog of the forest is also gone. So we can go to this chest here and pick up the tail key. So now that we have that, we are ready to proceed to level one, the tail cave. So the owl is going to talk to us one more time. Like I said, as you progress through the game, this happens more and more infrequently. He will usually only show up after each dungeon at this point, or at that point later in the game, uh, and he'll stop holding your hand so much. But you have to remember, back when this game came out on the Game Boy, this was meant to be like people's first introduction uh, to Zelda. Like, it was supposed to be like sort of beginner friendly. Uh, so they've sort of, again, made a one-to-one -one, uh, recreation of this game, and it, but it just looks way more beautiful. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, we're going to make our way to the Tail Cave. It is near the beach, so we're just going to head towards the same relative route uh, that we did to get our sword. But instead, instead of jumping all the way down, uh, we're just going to follow the first path east that we can take after the boys playing catch. So we're going to make our way around these trees, and then we're going to go down. And we're going to enter the tail cave. So all you have to do is uh, just press A in front of that keyhole, and Link will insert the key. Uh, well, at least that's what he should be doing. I don't know why they didn't put that in as an animation, but uh, the, the lock magically goes away, and the dungeon opens. Uh, so I think... No, the owl is not going to show up here one more time. No, okay, he's not. All right, so we're going to enter level one, the tail cave, and this will begin our uh, walkthrough of this dungeon. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head one screen to the west. We're going to knock these guys into the pit, and then that is going to cause a key to drop. So we're going to pick up that key, and since this is our first ever key, it's going to display a dialogue saying you got a small key. Now this, I don't think this ever happens again after you get that one dropped key. I think any other key that drops uh, just automatically gives it to you. So then we're going to open this chest in here. For the compass, you do have to defeat all four slimes in order to get the door to open again. Just keep that in mind in case you feel trapped in here. Just kill all the enemies and the door will open again. So now that we have the compass, a tone will play if there's a key in a room. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, it will also flash an icon on the screen in case you're hearing impaired. There you see it right there. And uh, yeah, that's the way we're going to get this key is we're actually just going to hit the switch there. Um, and then that's going to pop open a chest or drop a chest, I guess, in the top right corner. So opening this chest over here, this is going to give us another key. So moving on, we're going to go one screen to the west. We are going to kill all the enemies in here. And it's also going to uh, drop down a chest. But I don't think this chest contains a key because we didn't see the, the compass show up and we also didn't hear the tone. But this chest is going to give us the, the, the dungeon map. That was a stone beak, sorry. So this is going to give us the dungeon map. I'm almost positive in the original that the compass would make a sound for any chest. Uh, but now it's only doing it for keys in this version. I'm not really 100% sure if I'm remembering that correctly. Uh, but I think I am because I just played the original. Or at least I just played the DX version. Uh, on stream a couple weeks ago, so I may just be remembering that completely incorrectly. So this room, um, we have the enemies that have uh, card suits on them, and the object is to get all three on the same suit. If you get them close enough to each other, you can sword spin, and that will usually make it so they land on the same suit, but that didn't work out for me. 
Uh, but just trial and error until you get it. And then uh, once they land all in the same suit, a chest will drop and this will give you the stone beak. Uh, throughout all the dungeons in this game, there are owl statues and you can walk up to an owl statue after you have the stone beak and it will give you some sort of hint. So this one says, turn aside the spined ones with your shield. So this is a hint for later. Uh, going forward, I'm not gonna use these only because uh, I'm the one making the walkthrough. So like, uh, I'm gonna give you those hints as we go. But I just wanted to show you for this first dungeon as an intro, uh, what those actually do. So we can hear and see our compass lighting up saying that there is a key in this room. Uh, I'm gonna grab this guardian acorn so I take half damage because playing on hero mode is pretty rough sometimes. And then we're gonna kill this mini Moldworm and then we're gonna uh, go over here and kill this one as well. This is gonna cause an extra chest to show up uh, with some rupees in it. So this is not the chest that the compass was signifying the tone for. That chest is just in the room. It's the other chest that you see there. So this one has 20 rupees and then we're gonna go ahead and open up the other one. This one contains the key. Just wait for the little ball of lightning to move around the chest and then you can open it for yourself. So go ahead and do that. So now we have two small keys in our inventory. Over here, I'm just gonna show this to you. Come back later when you have bombs and open up that cracked wall and uh, get the treasure inside. I'm gonna skip it for now because I don't have bombs. The bombs become available after you uh, finish level two, which is Bottle Grotto. So after you finish that second dungeon, come back and you'll have bombs. So heading north, use the key on that door and then you want to wait for the balls of electricity to move around these blocks. You want to make sure you kill these little uh, slime, mini slimes, and because uh, if they attach to you, then you move a lot slower. And then this uh, owl statue will tell you to move a block. So what we want to do is move this uh, block that seems out of place, move it to the right, and it will open the door. Great, so in here, we have to use our shield. We're gonna turn over the spined ones. Uh, it takes two sword slashes, but you can also knock them into the pit just like that. So hold up your shield as they're running into you, and it will cause them to flip over, and then you can just kill both of them and then proceed down the stairs. And this is your first interaction, or uh, first encounter with Goombas. You can jump on them or fall on them, and uh, that will also kill them, or you can just slash them with your sword. Uh, they have a pretty high chance of dropping hearts. If you're not playing on hero modes, keep that in mind. And again, since I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure on normal, there is a, a floating heart there. I remember it from the original. But I'm pretty sure because I'm playing on hero mode, it's just gone. Uh, so yeah, just keep that in mind. So we now have the Rock's Feather, which allows us to jump, which is one of the coolest features of Link's Awakening. And this item gets used constantly throughout the game. So now we can jump over those Tektites, and uh, they are no longer a threat uh, in most situations. And of course, we could just jump all these gaps and uh, go up the ladder. Okay, so we're just gonna do a little bit of backtracking. We can now jump over this pit and then head back down. And now we're gonna get the nightmare key. So we can jump over this pit again, avoid the tech type, no big deal. Okay, and now I'm gonna take my time killing this Moldworm because I have one heart, I'm playing on hero mode, I don't have a guardian acorn, and uh, I don't wanna die, although it's going to happen later. So what we wanna do is go around these blocks and then we are going to encounter our first locked block. So as long as you have a key, just walk up to it, press A, just like a door. These things typically block staircases. Uh, so you know, just keep that in mind. So this chest up here, this has the nightmare key. And now we are ready to face the mini boss as well as the boss or nightmare of this dungeon, which is Moldworm. And as a former Link to the Past speedrunner, that boss gives me nightmares. And I actually take a death in this run that I'm going to leave in because uh, I just couldn't believe it. So. Go ahead and kill these enemies here. Uh, there's there's no more chests that are gonna drop in this room. So again, I'm just taking it very safely because I'm, I'm playing on hero mode. So now that we have a guardian acorn, uh, we can head back into this room. But now that we have the rock's feather, we can jump over the gap and go the other way. So this is the mini boss of this dungeon, Rolling Bones. And the objective here is to jump over his uh, spiked roller and then slash him as he tries to move back to it. Uh, be very careful though because he does move in a diagonal pattern and he can jump into you and he does deal damage when that happens just like that so keep that in mind if i didn't have that guardian acorn i would have died right there so after uh i think it's like seven or eight slashes he will die and then a portal will also open up that brings you back to the beginning of the dungeon so in case you want to leave for anything you can take that portal and uh there will be one at the entrance that brings you back to this room so you can go out restock your health or whatever and then uh just come back later. The staircase there 
leads to the room underneath the boss room. We're not going to go there. Instead, we are going to face Moldorm, and I'm going to cut it here and transition in my actual kill uh, because, like I said, I took a death, a really stupid one, and uh, we're just not going to show it because it's a waste of time. So here we go. So the objective of Moldorm, as you just got a hint there, is he has a red ball on his tail, and the objective here is to hit that ball. If you do two sword spins, that's all you need. Otherwise, you need, uh, I think, four regular slashes. But if you do two sword spins, you'll kill him pretty quickly. Now, if you get too close and your sword is out, he has a chance to uh, shrink back into himself and change his pattern. So you got to be very careful when he's doing that. So I think we're going to get it here. Nope, we're not going to get it there. Maybe on the next one. Nope. Okay, so... Yeah, he, he could just shrink back into himself. Uh, it makes it a little bit harder than his Link to the Past counterpart, but two sword spins will do the trick. And if you get knocked off, it's not a big deal. You're not automatically dead. Instead, you'll go to a room underneath, and you'll come up in the staircase in the room just before this. So we're going to collect our heart container, and then we're going to move into the next room, and we're going to get our first instrument of the sirens. And that about does it. So that is the first dungeon. That is Tail Cave, and that is also how to get the Tail Key in case you needed help with that. And yeah, I guess that's it. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on Nintendo Switch, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new videos go live. If you like this content a whole lot, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. You can follow me on Twitter at SJCage, and you can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash sweetjohnnycage. All right, I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.